Hello, everybody. It's Michelle Marie Donnie, of course, Mr. Stuffed Cat. <laughs> I always kind of talk about him, and as I had him set up here behind me, so I can. Um, she smell, she smell. <laughs> okay, and anyway, today we're going to talk about a little more exciting than we did this morning. This morning, I think I probably bored you to tears. And I'm sorry. Okay, so, uh, yes, I finally did put myself. Get myself nice and dressed up nicer, and I got, you know, put a little bit of foundation on and, and everything. So, I mean, I look better. Of course, my coffee cup is still over there, so I'm going to grab that. <laughs> okay. Now, today I wanted to take some time to talk to you because, well, you know, um, I noticed that my viewership is down. And, of course, I wasn't feeling well a couple of, um, for about a week or two, so I really kind of was out of it physically. And, uh, of course, yesterday I did my first video in the studio, and I really was kind of depressing. And I don't think it really made you very happy either. You know what, though? I'll be honest with you say it. You, know, you, you, you try to do good videos. I really do. But, like I said, I really felt like crap last night. Um, but since I got a chance to take a nice hot soak in the tub and wash my hair really well and um, get up and try to relax, I decided to, well, why don't we talk about some things? Some of my favorite things. Uh, I'm not going to sing them, obviously, because of copyright infringement. So, we're going to talk about them. What are some of Michelle Marie Delaney's most favorite things? Winter. Now, some people wonder what was so big deal about winter. It's just a cold time of year. There's snow in the northern or southern hemisphere. Depending on which, 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 which part of the world you're in, if you, obviously I'm in the northern hemisphere now. Um, winter technically starts on uh, December 21st, 2013, in this year, and will end on Ostara of 2014. So you probably said, big deal. Well, okay. Maybe you're not a winter person, so let me try to explain it to you from a winter perspective. Why well, I love winter. Winter is special because um, I remember the times when I used to hang out with my family. And we used to always made a big deal about, well, we actually made a big deal about Thanksgiving, too. So I'm going to throw that in there, even though it's not quite winter, it's late autumn. But why not? Um, Starting with um, Thanksgiving, we begin the process of getting together. We have a gathering, um, usually extended family. We all come together, and we have a big Thanksgiving dinner, and um, usually it'll be a few hours of fun and you know fun and games. Get to meet the, my cousins and my my now I have now I have nephews and nieces and. So I get a chance to talk to them. And um, it was always a wonderful time um, to get together and, and share stories around the coffee and the cake after dinner. And we would have a supper afterwards. In other words, when we eat two dinners, we would have the big th uh, thanks Thanksgiving dinner. We'd all relate to everything. And then usually about, about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night, we have a supper. Which would be um, when we serve like sandwiches and cakes and pies and oh man, I miss those. <laughs> I miss those times a lot. And um, and of course, my the men in the family will be watching football on Thanksgiving football games on television, and um, that was what we would do during Thanksgiving. Um, at the same time, uh, we start talking about Christmas, and we often, some families will put the Christmas tree up already, and the Christmas lights will be on the tree, 
And sometimes we'd have presents, and some families would put the presents underneath the tree um, around Thanksgiving. Sometimes they don't. Depends um, on how each family felt. Now, my family didn't, but uh, the tree itself would often be set up. And um, actually, sometimes it would be. So it actually depended. Some, some, some family members put it up early, some didn't. My parents have done both, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, and then the thing is, is that we, it was just the start of the joy, the festivity about the, the holiday of Thanksgiving. And we would give thanks um, to Mother and Father God for the, the beautiful gifts that we have received this year. Um, the harvest, okay, is what Thanksgiving was supposed to be about. That's what the... Uh, the the, the, the creators of Thanksgiving and playing with rock uh, we're talking about was this, um, thanks for the harvest the successful harvest of the year so we kind of still do that to this day um, it's not a pagan holiday per se but um, we do have something similar that we do when we celebrate Samhain Samhain is kind of is actually considered the final day of harvest fall harvest um that's when we bring in the pumpkins and things like that. It's also on the veil. It's also thinnest between uh, here and the other side. And so there was always this kind of excitement about, um, you know, getting a chance to maybe you could find your uncle or, or maybe your long lost aunt. And, you know, you miss so much. We know that <clears throat> it's been the uh, Irish and Celtic lore. The, um, People really respect the Samhain. It's the harvest festival that says the thinnest the veil between the side and the other side is the thinnest. <clears throat> so they would leave little keepsakes for their loved ones, um, you know, and also they would have to deal with the, the dark entities, which would they would do trick or treat. Now, trick or treat is not the Christ, it's not the stuff that we know today. I mean, little kids, basically, with the Irish would do is they put out a little saucer of milk. Idea is a little treat so that the little evil creatures wouldn't do tricks instead. Um, but that's that's just the way some did it in Ireland. It's not what we did. We didn't do that. My parents are Italian Norwegian. We had a whole different ball game of what we could do. But basically, we looked at um, we would look at the, all the family members that had passed away. And have sacrificed their lives to um, be here. And so it was really kind of just an exciting time to think about all the, our relatives and family and friends that would come in. And we would think about, gee, you know, what, uh, you know, what about uncle so-and-so or aunt so-and-so? Now, what were they like? You know, what did they do? That was what we did. Okay? I'm just choosing here. You'll fix this. You'll fix that. Yeah. That One of my slips has got some mechanical problems, but that's a different story. Um, the, um, the thing I remember most about, speaking of, uh, of Halloween, as we call it here in the U.S., or Samhain, um, is, I mean, especially when I was a little kid, it was very popular. Um, go out, go door to door. I lived in an apartment complex um, for the first few years of my childhood. Um, and so we'd go around door to door since second grade. And there was a lot of apartments and they were all kind of close together. And so we would always ring the door and go tick or treat. And we'd have like little, you know, Christmas, I mean, little Thanksgiving, I mean, not Thanksgiving. But yeah, I guess some people would get Greek says this. A turkey or something. We usually we decorate ourselves as like a superhero, or whatever, and um, we get candies and things like that. That's when going door to door trick or treating wasn't so damn dangerous. Um, today to do this is um, um, not really likely to be successful. And then of course we would also um, after we came home we would have my mom and dad would check the chocolates to make sure that there was no tampering. Uh, because even back then, there were some people that were doing that kind of stuff. So, you know, people were checking those things. And, um, 
it was just, um, it's just a different time than now, okay? Now, what about Yule? Oh, yes, my favorite. Yule is actually, is actually winter itself. Um, I really gotta admit, I love Yule. I love, actually, every day after Thanksgiving, to me especially, was a time of great joy. Because I always felt that I, I could feel the energy in my bosom, and I could feel the excitement as I feel the, the, the energies for the winter coalesce inside of me. And I was like, oh, I used to love snow. I still do. Um, I always had dreams of being a great princess and, and being able to make snow happen. I didn't realize that I would actually be doing that when I actually turned out to be about, you know, you know, three years ago. Um, so... You know, 36 years, 33 years old, I actually began the process of, because I'm going to be 36 in February, so I might as well say 33. Oh, I was actually closer to about 34. I mean, I got a chance to do, in some extent, my lifelong dream of, you know, being part of the great environment, whether um, Project with Mother Asana for the Yahweh, and I have been very happy about it. So, yes, when Yule comes, that is when I'm at the peak, and it's when, my, it's when I'm, like, happiest. And, yeah, of course, I love Christmas, too, but not for the reason that Christians do. Um, I need to explain that, but that I will explain, too. Um, but let me explain, first of all, about Yule. Yule! Yule is when winter starts. Okay, the days get shorter or get longer and longer, and they do, believe it or not. It's called the solstice. Okay, and what happens if it's actually the shortest day of the year? And then after that, um, you know, December 21st on, the days going to slowly get longer and longer and longer, and we would get together and, you know, um, we get a chance to talk about, you know, that's why we have a Yule log. A Yule log is, is that we, our ancient ancestors, um, were burning a log in honor of um, the sun god so that our season will continue to remain going in our homes. The Yule log actually represents to us a piece of, of, of uh, light, uh, the celebration of light. Because after all, we have all the shortest days, and now we're going to start seeing the longest ones. So we set the Yule log light, which gives light to the home. And we'll burn that log uh, for quite a while, for 12 days. I don't know how you do that, but that's what we do. And it was um, a really, really wonderful time um, to think about what the whole magic of the holidays were like really, really awesome. I mean, the Christmas music. Okay, I don't like some of the stuff, but I like some, so bite me. Okay. Um, the music about frosty and snowmen and happy holidays and, and, you know, what child is this? Oh, come on, come on, man. Oh, I like that song too. You know, Silent Night, Holy Night. I mean, yeah, I am partially Christian because I was raised as a Catholic, okay? I'm still, deep in my heart, I'm still a little bit of Catholic, but I'm also a pagan, so, you know, I do tend to have a little bit of crossover between the two holidays, and Yule is important to me, and Christmas is important to me. Yule is personally important to me because that's when my reign starts for three months. So... I get really, really excited about Yule. And then I do wonderful and I kick ass and I take names all the way up until Astara. And then Astara is like, when I got to kind of do the equivalent of turn the keys over to the next steward that does spring. And then for nine months, I'm just Michelle Marie, everyday American, Snow Queen, 
uh, on vacation kind of thing. I guess you can call it that because it really isn't like I'm really doing anything. It's just three to nine months a year. I'm just basically everybody. So I I um I kind of hate having to turn in the keys, if you will. But you know, I know that the other three seasons have to be able to do their work. So as part of the cycle of life. That's so why we have the Wiccan Wheel here, because we represent the cycles of the solstices, um, and of course, the um, equinoxes. And so, I'm really, you know, I love winter and I love, but I do like spring too. Early spring is nice. Somebody said to me, to think of, oh, my wife, those of you who hate winter, think of this way. Winter is the celebration of, of the earth expecting from the old crone who dies, she will be reborn as a new little girl. The earth, okay, all new life will spring forth after Ostara. And that is exactly what you is. It's not, oh, everything's dead. Now the world is dead. The trees have no leaves except for the evergreens. And I have to listen to stupid holiday music for the rest of my freaking life. It's not that bad, trust me. Really, it isn't. It just happened to me that, um, you know, I just live for it. I love winter, and I love Christmas, and I love Yule. And I like New Year's, too, but I never really kind of got into the New Year's spirit. It's like, you know, big deal. <laughs> so, um... Anyway, by the way, I also want to ask you guys a question because there's something that's been bothering me really quickly. Why hasn't anybody been watching? I mean, where is it? I mean, where is everybody? There, I just asked that. Where are all of my viewers? I only had two viewers at the time I recorded this video on my channel. On my last video, okay, it was a depressing video. You know what? I agree. The video sucked on ice, and I, I could have been better. And I, I'm sorry, but I mean, I was just very upset, and I just had to get that off my chest. But usually, a video gets many six to ten viewers, and I don't even see that many viewers coming in right now. I still have 29 subscribers, but. Can we get the subscriber count up, honey? Please. Has to be a way. To start by letting your friends know. And um, also, if you do want to know, if you want me to talk about a topic, please let me know what the topic is. And I can research it and study it and give it some thought and try to figure a way to present it to you. That's what I like to do. By the way, this winter, I'm looking forward to you, and I'm looking forward to... Oh, we're going to be having another convocation again. And in addition to that, um, I hope... I'm going to say hope because last time I tried to have this occasion, um, uh, bring this up, it, it never happened. So I'm not going to get too excited about it. it I would love to have... By the way, Yule this year will be on Saturday, and the soup kitchen will be open. Here in Winston. So the open door soup kitchen will be open on December 21st. And not only that, of course, I will be there. I will be wearing my, uh, my, 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 uh, clothing for the occasion. And, um, I only wear my white dress during Yule. I don't wear it any other time of year except for state occasions. So, um, I'm hoping that you're going to be there. And I don't know if they're going to make an announcement or have any kind of fanfare or nothing, but, you know, I'll be there, so that's all you need to know. And I wanted to show you something. Uh, now we're going to get into the fun program. Mr. Kitty Cat. Here. Oh, that way, this kitty is gone. <laughs> He's gotten very large. And I've mentioned that before in many channels. How much he's grown up. And he's so passive. 
and he's so docile. And he's such a beautiful kitty cat. Okay, go, lay, go back on your, lay on your phone book. Um, and so I'm really, really happy to have Mr. Kitty Cat here. The other cat, Fame, is here too. He's sitting on top of the, on top of the video monitor. And, of course, I never did introduce you to some of my stuffed animal collections either. Oh, well, let's just take a quick look at some of them. You saw this guy at the beginning? He's the newest member of the, the stuffed plush animal family. He's a big, big kitty cat. He's got a little ribbon on him. He's got a beautiful little pink nose. He's got two eyes. I don't think the man's to put whiskers on him, but unfortunately he's kind of he's kind of a little bit grubby. I'm sorry, it's because where he was there was a little bit of soot, and um, he's um uh, as I said he's the newest kitty, yeah, the kitty cat, and um I I've had him now for about a year, and then you see these other stuffed cats. Let's see, got this cat now. This one used to purr when you squeeze his belly. <laughs> I give him a cardiac I gotta give him a cardiac massage. And just kidding. He doesn't purr anymore. But you know, he was I got him when I was in high college. And um he's been kind of on my couch ever since. I'm sorry you don't purr anymore, big boy. He used to make a loud rumbly rumbly rump noise. It's it's he's air powered. And so, you know, he doesn't burn anymore. But he's the cute. And of course we have this one, this is a Siamese cat. And he's um you know this actually I kinda got this from an, another person who had this one. She didn't want him anymore, so he got me. And then we have stupid little toys for the Y2K situation. <laughs> I don't know what this is supposed to be. Uh, it says here, uh, <clears throat> animals, baby, Mr. Milburn, Milburn, whatever that is. And he wears a hat that says zero one zero one zero zero, which was supposed to be for January first, two thousand. And then of course we have some other ones here. We have an old we have um another green here. We have a white tiger. Um she used to have a cub. I don't know where the cub went. I also put her with the other tiger because I got this one from Wingley Brothers many years ago. And, um, let's see this one. Yeah, I'm a Got a cabbage patch. Unfortunately, she has no clothes. Right here. This is the original cabbage patch. <laughs> and we have a little pink tank here. I found this one in the dumpster. I have cried many tears with this little rat. <laughs> Um, this is, I look at this little teddy bear sometimes, and I still think about what this teddy bear was supposed to say. There used to be a music box inside of it. There isn't anymore. And so, it doesn't make any music anymore. I can put something in. And we have a little mouse with... Um, you know, a little mouse with uh, wings, a little mouse angel. And I do have one that does have a music box in it, but Mary's dead. There's Beverly Hills Beverly Hillbillies Bear. Um, the, the theme song music box, the Barry's dead. I then put a new one in there. But I thought it was cute, so I kept them. And so that's pretty much almost all the animals, of course, you see. The different Hello Kitties. Um, we got two of them. Yeah. Um, 
these are given me by Jim Gravel. Um, the the both kitty white, and one has a more of the traditional Hello Kitty with the pink top and um suspenders like thing, and then we have the other one here, which is blue, which is supposed to be like the All American Hello Kitty, and um. These two have been on my um, couch now for a while. And uh, speaking of Jim Gravel, I miss you. Wish I really wish I knew where you were. Because that's, that's a story altogether. Oh, I know. I'll tell it to you. I might as well. Um, Jim Gravel and I um, had a a good time over at um, Turning Stone in Oneida, New York on March of last year. And we really had a chemistry. We had a lot of positive energy. And I really was hoping we really, both of us were hoping we were going to go further. But the, the, the law of fates wasn't to be that way because you see she was a day person and she liked to do things in the day and she liked to do so as a compulsive gambler and I'm a nocturnal person and I tend to do things at night and um so we didn't get a chance to really go any further other than just friends and of course she had to find a job so she had to go back and go back and look for work and she said she would keep in contact with me, but I knew that wasn't going to happen. So we kind of just quietly said, if we see each other again, you know, wonderful. And you know what? I still miss you, and I really wish that you would at least contact me, you know, because um, I really would like to see you again. And, um, and I think that's important to explain that, you know, I see a lot of, you know, you in, in my everyday life. Oh, yeah, it's not one of my stuffed animals. <laughs> I got bunny rabbits, too. Um, I just really kind of just wish that, you know, you and I could get together again. And uh, so, you know, it's almost like the song goes, <clears throat> When will I see you again? You know, it's like, when will I see you again? Yeah, 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 when will I see you? Okay. Anyway, so the point is, is that um, it's been a lot of stuff here covered that was a little bit more exciting than what was covered earlier today. Um, but I don't want to get stupid and sap happy either. So, you know, I just want you to know that, you know, I, I really would like to rather talk about happy things in my videos than sad things, and, um, so, I'm gonna work and try to get more happy things together for you, I think that you much more preferred than hearing me tell you sad stories, because it seems like the world is full of that shit already, so, you know, I'm gonna try, okay, I will try, yeah, my throat is still a little raw, and of course, it doesn't help any that the landlord turned the heat on today, this place is hot, um, and my throat gets really raspy in hot weather, and is and, and heat in this apartment can get really dry. It's hot water heat, and it gets really, really cooking hot in here. So I'm going to get ready to wrap this up, but please do not be afraid to leave me comments in the section below here. and Or if you can send me an email, it doesn't matter, okay? I'm going to give you information in the contact section in the videos. You can reach me, and... You know, if you got any comments, suggestions, complaints, I will read what you write. It doesn't mean I'm going to always answer it, but I will read it anyway. So, if you want to have a conversation and talking about what we talked about, or even if it's nothing about this at all, if you want to talk about, I mean, what was your favorite holidays of the year and why, that would be an excellent topic, too. Because I want to learn more about other people and their, like, their interests as well. So, I'll talk to you soon. 
I'm not going to guarantee I'm be doing a video every day. It's it's kind of hard to do, but you know I will take the time to, to spend time with you when I can. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye bye, everybody.